right at the top of the hill it starts ah uh, it's not doing it it's slowing down slowing down and i look back and there's just smoke billowing out behind us so at 15 i got a job at the local grocery store um bagging groceries uh uh, sorting bottles because you know they used to have kids do that back in the day instead of having a machine that you could just put them in so working there for about a year I managed to save a little bit of money my grandpa died a few years earlier so I was gifted his old pickup truck when I turned 16 which was a beat the hell old Chevy square body um, it was rusted away pretty bad and the brakes barely worked but uh, it ran pretty strong so it was a good truck um, so uh, upon turning 16 and being gifted this truck and having a little bit of money uh, set aside from uh, the working at the grocery store, I immediately did the responsible thing and bought a dirt bike. I And I mean, the first time I drove that truck, the first time I really drove at 16, I got in that truck and I drove it uh, a few miles up the highway and I bought myself a six-year-old YZ250. So I had myself a truck and I had myself a dirt bike and I found myself with a little bit of independence and uh, my friends and I started looking around the state for fun places to ride and we came across Silver Lake Sand Dunes. Now if you're not from Michigan, Silver Lake Sand Dunes is like a uh, baby glamis. Um, it's just a, a big uh, open area of sand dunes that uh, the state allows us to ride dirt bikes and side by sides and sand rails and monster trucks whatever you bring it you beat it it's a, it's a real good time out there um so uh the summer i after i turned 16 we discovered silver lake and we went up there and we had the best time you could imagine uh a buddy of mine and i i had my yz250 and he actually was riding an it 225 or 200 something like that and uh it was just the most the most awesome time so throughout high school, I had my YZ, and I uh, ended up buying a nicer little S10 pickup truck because that old that old square body was uh, was a death trap. We had a few places pretty local to ride, and it was a uh, was a real good time. Now that YZ of mine, uh, it it never seemed to run right, and I was uh, a young kid and uh, didn't know much about mechanics at the time, and I I learned a lot working on that bike, but I could never quite get it right. The carburetor always seemed off. Looking back on it, I think that the previous owner had jetted it like rich and then mixed the gas and oil really rich. And it was just like the whole exhaust system just leaked oil all the time. It was, it was gross. But it was a fun bike and I rode the crap out of it. So the summer after high school, I still had my S10. I still had my YZ. And uh, we were still riding a lot. It was a lot of fun. But uh, we were planning the, the last trip to the dunes of the year. It was September, and um, this was going to be the last time that we were going to be able to make it up there. And I was still working on the carburetor for my YZ, and I ordered a new jet needle. I was shooting, shooting for the moon, you know, trying anything I could. I got a new jet needle, got a few uh, jets, and I was told that they would be in stock at the local bike shop that I ordered them from, from uh, the day before we left for the dunes. So, of course, the bike shop didn't have them that day. So the next day, we're leaving for the dunes. And I'm just panicked. I'm like, my bike's not going to run right. I was really hoping to, like, really get it going right. But I had a decent job, and I was making decent money. So as I'm sitting there in the showroom of this, this bike shop, I looked over, and there was a brand-new YZ400F sitting there just looking pretty as can be. So I walked over to the sales lady, and I said, All right, y'all didn't have my part. And I'm really upset about it. So what do you say? I trade in this bike and I buy that bike. Just to show you how mad I am, I'm going to give you a lot of money. <laughs> so uh, we ended up, we made the deal happen. They gave me a good deal because of uh, the fact that I was pretty annoyed. And uh, I rolled that bike out of, the, out of that showroom into the back of my truck and headed home. That bike's just amazing. It is just such a monster. But... Uh, Let's see, I was 18, 18 years old, and I'd never ridden a big four-stroke like that, and I had no idea how to even start it. 
<laughs> I brought it home, and uh, my friend and my dad took turns push starting. We, all of us push starting each other on it to ride it around a little bit, and it was a lot of fun. But I had no idea how to start it. And we're like, whatever, we're going to the dunes. So we're all loaded up, we got all the gear, we got the bikes, and we're headed towards the dunes. I am more excited than I've ever been in my entire life. I got a brand new bike, and it's the nicest thing that I have ever owned. And uh, just so excited. Still don't even know how to start the thing. The, I <laughs> the idea is, it's so silly. Brand new bike. There was very few of them uh, around. I'd never seen one. And I don't know how to start it, and we're going up to the sand dunes, whereas, you know, you could push start it almost anywhere except for the sand dunes. Anyway, I don't know what we were thinking. I don't recall exactly why. I know that I picked the bike up earlier in the day, and uh, we, we must have had something to do because we didn't, we didn't leave out until it was probably 9 o'clock at night. And... Uh, from where we live, Silver Lake is is probably a three, three and a half hour drive, depending. Um, and, uh, you know, we were kind of night owls back in the day, so it was not a big deal to us. So, of course, the friend that was going with me didn't have a truck, but I did, so we, we packed up my S10. It was a 95 S10 with a four-cylinder and a five-speed. And when you had nothing in the bed, I swear to God, it had a squat to it. It it, it was silly looking. I, I didn't really like the truck, but it got me where I was going. So, in that truck, we got two dirt bikes, all our gear, food, tent, all our camping equipment. We got everything packed into this little tiny little S10 pickup truck. And off we ride into the sunset. So, by this point, we've, we've made this trip hundreds of times. We could probably do it, you know, with our eyes closed. It's real, real easy, you know. You just head up 127 to 96 to 131 and you're there pretty much so we're trucking along and obviously this is a this is a good amount of weight for this little pickup truck and we are just tooling along just so excited to get up there and still you know knowing that we have to put our tent up in the middle of the night so we're cruising and like i said we've got about ten thousand pounds more on this truck than it wants to have but no matter we've done this a million times Everything's cool, everything's fine, we're having a good time, just chit-chatting back and forth, you know, we're making good time, make it up to Lansing, uh, switch highways, start heading west, and we're tooling along 96, and uh, the truck's kind of acting a little funny. Now, I didn't have a radio in that truck, it was such a pile of junk, so I was pretty in tune to how it sounded and how it acted, and this whole trip, it's kind of acting like it's not exactly happy. I can understand that, we're asking a lot of it. So not long after you get on 96, you're heading west, you, there's a spot where there's a big downhill and then a big uphill. So we're cruising along, we get to the downhill, all good, and right at the bottom of it, it felt like we hit a big puddle of water. Like my, my rear wheels lost traction and it just went vroom! And, and the, the, the RPM shot up and I was like, that was really weird, I let off and then I, you know, going up the hill, it's okay, it's acting fine, going up the hill and then it's... Right at the top of the hill, it starts, ah, uh, it's not doing it. It's slowing down, slowing down. And I look back, and there's just smoke billowing out behind us. And I'm like, oh, man, what's going on? This is bad. So I take the truck out of fifth gear, and I push in the clutch, and there's no clutch. And I try to move the gear shifter, and it will not go into any gear. And we just kind of slowly coast to a dignified failure on the side of uh, the highway there. I went from being on top of the world to just falling so far just like that. I just bought this brand new dirt bike and uh, and I not long ago paid off this truck so I knew that I, I didn't have enough money to swing you know the truck payment, the bike payment and the rent that I was paying at the time too so uh, I was in trouble. I don't know how the people deal in situations like this but my emotions cycle fast. I go from anger to despair to just feeling like hey what are we going to do about it but laugh? So, what are we going to do? Uh, this was also in the time before cell phones. So, here we are, brand new dirt bike, all of our gear, side of the highway, no way to contact anybody, and it's probably 11.30, 12 o'clock at night at this point. So, there wasn't much we could do. So, we uh, put the locks on the bikes and started walking. 
and uh, we didn't quite realize that the next town away was Portland and it was several miles <laughs> so we're walking along just kind of cracking jokes trying to take our minds off of the uh, just nightmare of a situation we're in and uh, out of the darkness this pickup truck screams past us and screeches to a halt on the shoulder of the road the guy pops the door open and yells dirt bikers <laughs> we're like what <laughs> so we go running up he's like man i saw your truck back there you know let me take you to uh to the next exit to the gas station and uh so we're like yeah we hop in the truck and he takes us up to the payphone and uh I call my dad, my buddy calls his dad, and we're just like, uh, this is the situation we're in, man, and all hope is lost. So, dad, can you please bring your truck up here, and we'll put all the bikes and stuff in it and take us home. So, my dad, of course, says, yeah, we'll be there, you know, no worries, just get back to the truck and uh, stay safe, and we'll be there in an hour, hour and a half or so. So my buddy and I walked back and we had to walk the whole way back to the truck. Nobody came to our rescue that time. So we get back to the truck and uh, we just, uh, we, we, we took the bikes out and we took all our gear out and set it up. And then we just set up a couple of little, uh, little lawn chairs and uh, cracked open a couple of Coca-Colas and, and uh, sat there and waited. Now this is where the story gets really cool. Um, so we're just sitting there kind of cracking jokes in our lawn chairs trying to take our minds off the situation and uh, we see a couple of pairs of headlights coming at us. And then they pull off and I'm like, all right, rescue's here, there's dad in his truck. And then I'm like, what's what's your dad doing here with his car? And so they get out and they come up, make sure we're all right, check on us and everything. So everything's cool. And my dad goes, all right, load everything up in the truck. Here's the keys. You guys have a good weekend. Go up there. Go riding, enjoy yourselves, and we'll deal with everything else on Monday. I can't tell you how fast I went from depression to joy. Just knowing that even though all this had gone wrong in this little minute, we were still going to go and uh, see this adventure through and go riding. And I was going to get to enjoy my brand new bike. And uh, it was an awesome weekend. But that was just another time that my dad came through and saved the day. Because... That's what dads do, so.